He threw me and encouraged somebody. Strengthen somebody and let them know they are yours. And whatever they are doing is not in vain for you, Lord. I thank you for these ones that have come. I thank you for the faithful ones that have been serving you. And I pray that they don't grow weary in well doing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, God's heart for service. It is the heart of God for us to serve. Jesus came to serve. He came to serve the people. So whatever you do for God, know that it is wrapped up in the love for the Father. Service for the Father. And time with the Father. Amen? Amen. Until we come to the place where we know that all that we are doing is for God himself. We have to spend time with him. We have to serve him diligently with all of our hearts and our abilities. And we have to love him from our hearts. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, everything will be doing with in vain. A lot of us serve, some serve with animosity, some serve with jealousy, some serve just to be seen and noticed that your heart must always occupy those three places. Love for the Father, service for the Father, and time with the Father. When you do that, you will not be like the second son of the prodigal son's father. That only when in Luke 15 we know the story, he was serving the Father that he did not have the heart of the Father. He was jealous of the brother that returned after spoiling all he had. And he was angry at him. He was angry at the Father. That when you know the heart of the Father, you know that his heart is love, then you will serve with love. You will serve with compassion. And you will serve knowing that all the time you have, all the service you are given is unto the Father. And when you don't spend time with him, you will never know his heart. Amen? Today I'm here to encourage you to know the heart of God. The heart of God is for souls. Amen? And when you serve, you have to serve diligently that you don't wound a soul, that you encourage a soul into God's kingdom. Because Jesus says, anyone that offends one of the least of my brethren, it would have been better that a millstone were wrapped around their neck and they drank in the water than for us to offend even the little baby child in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Acts 13, 36. It says, For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. David served his generation. David was the man that made arrangements for Uriah to be killed. But David knew the heart of the father and God called him a man after his own heart. So it's not where you have been, it is where you want to go to. And I pray today that you want to go to the in the presence of the Lord then we hear well done good and faithful servant Amen? Amen Some serve and then they get discouraged because others are not serving But I'm here to encourage you It's not about anybody It's an individual race Amen. I have a great thing say heavenly race I don't go tired Amen? Amen And I won't get tired of running my race it's an individual race we are running. And we have to understand this. Whether you come with me or you leave me alone and see God. Amen? Amen? I believe there's a song like that. Don't no one joins me, still I will follow. Amen? We have to follow Jesus and we have to know his heart. So make the great commission your priority. When was the last time you told somebody about Jesus? That's the first part of service. Sweeping is good, cleaning is good, singing is good, 
then until we can affect his soul, we have not started. Amen? Glory. You may not directly affect his soul by saying, come to Jesus, then your character and your attitude can invite somebody to Jesus and keep them serving him. So be careful how you allow your character to defeat who you are in God. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the world. My prayer for you is that you run this race to the end. You started well, I pray that you will end well in the name of Jesus. Though others may not be doing what you are doing, don't get discouraged. Because there is reward in service. Amen? I can get your reward. And you can get my reward. That's why 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Always abounding in the works of the Lord. Knowing, you have to know this that your labor is not in vain. Amen? Amen. We serve a God who sits high, that he looks down low, and he sees what we all are doing for his kingdom and for his purpose. So we have to be careful, because this great and awesome and almighty God, he comes down from heaven to look at the works of men, to see what you are doing, and he says, you are, we are going to give account of all that we do, whether it be good or bad. So, I fear him and I reverence him so much. And whatever you do in words or in deeds, I pray you will do it as unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Micah 6 and 8, he says, He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? That to do justice and to love kindness, and to work humbly with your God. Three things God requires of us is for us to do justice, do what is right to somebody else. Love and be humble. Three great things that make character of any human being. If you don't know how to do right by people, nobody is going to do right by you. All right? Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap it. You may not reap it today, but you will surely reap it. So know what you are sowing. You sow words of encouragement, encouragement will come back to you. You sow love, love will come back to you. So when you hear what you reap what you sow, it's not always about money. We think it's only money that will come back to you. Then whatever you sow, every word you speak is a seed. So be careful what you are sowing. What seed are you sowing in the lives of your children? Oh, you are no good. You are just like your father. I pray the father was good. So your child will be good. Amen. Amen. So know the words that you are sowing because everything that comes out of your mouth is a seed. So be careful. Hallelujah. Lord. We are told We are told in 2 Corinthians 4 7, it said that we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We experience frailty because we are in this, this earthly, this clay body. Amen? Amen? My mother was put to rest last week Friday. It was a shell I saw. The body was just a shell because my mother was no more there. And she didn't look like that. So in this frailty that we carry, that we nourish so much, we have to know that this body that we like so much, we want to dress it up. We want to make it up. We want it to look good. That is not a true representative of who we are. 
our spirit man is the most important part of our body that we need to cherish and take care of it. So know in your heart that you have to know how to love because what you don't have, you cannot give. Amen? Yeah. God, Jesus said the two greatest commandments is to love God and love his people. There can be no church without love. There can be no marriage without love. Even your business will not su survive without love. Because the people you deal with, you have to love them. Some may look unlovable, but you still have to love them. Because it's a command from God that we love one another. No amount of prayer will take the place of love. No amount of prayer will take the place of love. He says we should love others as we love ourselves. Why serving you may be beaten? Why serving you may be mistreated? Paul was beaten many times. He experienced a lot of shipwrecks. Then he wrote most of the epistles and the gospels we are reading today. He did not allow what he was seeing or what he was going through to deter him from preaching the gospel. So I'm here to encourage you today to know that you may be beaten in the process of your serving. You may not be encouraged while you are serving. Nobody may tap you on the back and say you are doing good. Pastor prayed the praise team today. Then sometimes you may not see anybody to praise you then you still have to keep on serving because you are doing it as unto the Father. Don't get discouraged and don't get grow weary in your well-doing. We are told of a story in Esther chapter 8. We all know the story of Esther who was a little girl that was a slave and became the queen. Then in Esther chapter 8 from verse 12, from verse 1, we are told that she was the one that put her life on hold to save the people. After Modeca's death, she still remembered that the people were still in bondage. She had to go back to the king to say, it's not over yet, because you already signed the decree that all the Jews are going to be killed. So she is the one that put her life on the altar. It's not just if I perish, I perish, if I die, I die. Sometimes you have to be the one to place your life on the altar for your family. You may have to be the one to place your life on the altar to save the nation. You have to be the one that may be the one to lay your whole life on the altar to bring about salvation of your people, just like Esther did. So I'm encouraging us, don't be a selfish believer. Don't think about you, me and mine, all the time. Think outside the box and think of the life you can affect. When my mother's uh, funeral was going on, people were talking about how she fed them, how nobody came to her and went away empty handed. That's the legacy I want to continue, to know that Affect the life you affect is the one that will be counted for you. Not how many houses you have, not how many clothes you have, not how many cars you have, but what life have you affected? So I challenge us today as you serve, serve the Lord with gladness, serve Him with your whole heart. Affect a life. It may be a little child, it may be a widow, it may be anybody. But make sure your life is affecting other lives. Amen? Amen? Because at the end of the day, it's what you do for God that is going to last. So I encourage you, keep on doing what you know is best for you to do. Time is not on our side that I just come to be an encouragement to you. To know that God is for you.